Hey everyone, Suri here, and welcome back to another week of Light Season Offense matches. Edelgard's continued successes last week had me interested to see how she'd perform in Light Seasons, and once again she rose to the occasion. This time she actually swept every match with a single team, including a couple of very close calls at the end of the week. Edelgard's build is the same as usual, using Heavy Blade for some extra true damage and special acceleration to enable the triple action Raging Storm style that her legendary version introduced. Assault Troop is a fantastic addition to the mix, giving her pseudo-cavalry mobility to navigate the map with. Her weapon's Brave Effect ties the whole thing together, making it very easy for her to secure one-round knockouts. The two primary supports are also pretty familiar at this point. Combining Ascended Florina with Winter Bernadetta gives the team an easy way to bring Florina's weapon fully online, which opens up some really wild options for navigating a map. Bernadetta also offers easy access to buffs for Edelgard, along with a chill to help secure heavy blade checks against some outlier opponents. The Mythics, as usual, are an excellent trio of supports. Putting Ash and Florina on the same team makes the squad ridiculously mobile, and Ash works well as a backup Gale Forcer to handle things Edelgard can't quite break. Mila's sabotage support is invaluable for Edelgard, offering a significant boost to her one-round potential, and Peony never stops being an S-tier dancer. Now that we've gone over the team, let's get to the first match. This was a fun match to run into early in the week. They've got a cool team put together here using the combination of Legendary Hector and Pent to enable a fully charged Blazing Flame for their Legendary Lena and a fully charged Blazing Wind for their Happy. Using Blazing Flame actually almost doubles the damage output that Legendary Lelina has on tap, and Blazing Wind Happy can easily catch people off guard. Having their entire frontline full of Pathfinder thanks to the Double Note and Duo Dogger also gives these two cavalry access to almost the entire map and can make it very difficult to approach this safely. Unfortunately, it is setting their traps away from the frontline to discourage any ranged hit and run attempts leaves them pretty vulnerable to a Gale Force approach. I'll study your technique. And even with damage reduction involved, Edelgard can carve through both of the Let's notes on this first turn. I wish you luck. Before using Florina to warp all the way back to the range of our safety like fence. And then wait. we just wait a turn before going in on the rest. From there, it's easy enough to just dance Edelgard forwards and let her curve through the rest of the ranged threats, starting with Dogger, before moving on to Happy. And then boxing in Pent while taking down Lolina. Hector isn't something that's ever going to be able to threaten her when she's defending against him. And since his armor mobility is pretty limiting, we can just start moving forwards to collect these ether pots. It will be done. He moves in to attack Edelgard, but she's not having any problems wiping him out. Even if he'd had his weapon refined, it would not have saved him there. From there, we can just smite Florina forwards, pick up one ether pot, and then have Peony move in to dance her, snag the second ether pot, and have Edelgard close out the match. I wish you luck. This match was another fun one to run into later in the week. They've got a very impressive form of Mur on their front line as part of their safe ball formation. The combination of close defense 4 and hardy fighter make it very hard to knock her out as long as she gets a turn to bring the Siskuchin online. And the maxed out savvy fighter Ignaz backing her up is really impressive. I'd like to get up for my Felix at some point, but it might be a little while. 
Niffle in the back line is also a neat touch and makes it very hard to break through the formation after Mer if something actually gets through her. And using Obstruct on Medias is a nice way to stop someone from just sneaking in to pick off Catria. Really? It will be it's a very cool team I'll put together. But unfortunately, if we go in on the first turn like this, Mer doesn't actually have the Siskuchin to work with yet. And once we line up some support, Edelgard can move in and take her down. I'll study your technique. She actually gets to naturally quad Mer, since Party Fighters preventing the Raging Storm's auto follow up. And with Mur out of the way, Hadelgard can continue marching forwards and break through the Medias. This time with the auto follow up doing a lot of work for helping break through him. And with Frontline broken, we can just retreat all the way back out of range. Didn't even need Florina's warp effect this time, since their threat range is a little bit limited here once their front line is down. And from there, Edelgard can just continue cleaning up the rest. So this is in marching distance, so she's an easy first target. And while Niffle's damage reduction is doing some work for letting her survive the first swing, it doesn't do so much for Katria. I do not object. Repositioning Florina forwards here actually means that we can move her far enough up to give Peony access to Edelgard after she carves her way through Ignaz. Even with the combination of Savvy Fighter and Niffle, he can't survive the follow-up attack. And the dance gives Edelgard a fourth action in this turn to move in and take down Niffle, while also blocking Letitia into a corner. And with Letitia locked away, they can't really do anything this turn. So we can just move on to the next one, pick up our ether pots, and then let Edelgard close out the match. This match was a pretty wild one near the end of the week, mostly thanks to this plus five near save Ascended I Doom. I honestly wasn't expecting to use Edelgard to clear this match when I saw her, since I Doom's a very hard unit for Edelgard to actually break through, and especially with Dragon Wall and Tiki and Medius boosting her, it becomes almost impossible for Edelgard to crack through this under normal circumstances. They've also got a very neat Letitia on their front line who, thanks to being protected by Tiki and Idun, gets to threaten most of the map for free, especially with the note next to her, whose bonus doubler is actually a really neat touch and does a lot thanks to the Tiki next to her. The plus six Chrom's another very important threat to worry about if you try to tank this, and overall this does seem like a tricky defense to crack open. Unfortunately for Idun, <laughs> there is actually a way for Edelgard to break through her, as long as she gets fast enough to quad Idun. Which, thanks to the joint drive speed from Florina and the buffs she gets from Peony as well, and Mela too, I mean that Edelgard can just barely survive this glimmer and also finish Idun off. She can then move on to naturally double Letitia before using Florina's super guidance to warp past Peony and reposition her back before Florina gives her her entire health bar back with a reciprocal aid and also completes the turn by enabling her weapon. From there, it's not too hard to continue clearing things up. We can just move Edelgard forward and tense her, which lets her start by knocking down Krom. 
before moving down and picking off note as well. I wish you luck. From there we just play it safe and make sure Edelgard retreats back out of range so that we can continue raging storming through everything on the following turn. It will be done. And well, without a dancer left on the field or on their team to start with, it's not too hard to just stay out of range and let them walk forwards. Let's swim. And well, without Idun protecting them, Bremmond is a pretty easy first target. And Edelgard can move over and take down Medius next. I wish you luck. She does actually need all four swings to knock him out this time, but being able to quad does a lot of work. From here we move in to pick up the ether pots, and I actually ended up almost messing up on this closing of the match, since from here Edelgard doesn't actually have a raging storm available until we smite Ash forwards, and she does need the quads to actually finish TK off here. was a really fun one at the end of the week. It's another triple Pathfinder setup, this time with two invested duo dockers and one note. And it's very hard to engage on this team on the first turn thanks to their structure and trap placement. Which is important since Sarah means that their double dance trap with the duo docker as the seventh unit will always go off as long as it's not being shut down by a safety fence. And once Azura dances forward onto the Stalker, it's very easy for them to get the rest of their team moving, and probably find a knockout from there. We do end up just taking this first turn to set up, because I couldn't quite find a way to engage on this on the first turn and then get back out of their threat ranges safely. So instead we just take this safe defense turn to enable Serena's weapon, and get the rest of the team lined up to engage on the second turn. From there, Edelgard can reposition Florina forwards, and Florina can break this first ether pot before waiting in place, which lets us dance Edelgard and have her use the super guidance to jump past the healing tower and take down the first docker. While Guard does slow down the Gale Force, it's not the worst, since Ash can now warp up to Florina and give Edelgard just enough damage to bring down the note. From there we just want to make sure we take out Lysithia, who's one of the only things on this team that can still threaten Edelgard, before also making sure that we bait Azura and the Dogger away from dancing or being danced. Letting Dogger attack Mila here means that she's actually out of range of both Triandra and Azura, Happy New Year! which stops her from being a problem for the rest of this turn. And even though Azura doesn't actually do damage to Ash, the fact that she could do damage to Bernadetta means that she's forced to attack anyway. Triandra then goes after Edelgard. I was actually expecting the Sarah to go after Edelgard first and potentially get danced, which wouldn't have really changed much. But things still worked out really well here. And with the team scattered, it's easy enough to start picking up the pieces. Edelgard can start by taking out Dogger and using her normal Gale Force to get another action and work past Ash to pick up Triandra, I wish you luck. which gives her a Raging Storm to Let's go over win. and knock out Azura. I'll study your technique. Bernie can go over and snag her second ether pot, and then Flor morning. Peony can work past Florina, then Sadelgard, and let her close up weak. Oh, 
Overall, it was another really fun week with Summer Edelgard. I'm really looking forward to her bonus weeks and hopefully showing off some alternative builds for her. But I'm really happy with how the Scale Force team is working out. I'm not quite sure yet which season I'm going to land on for using her regularly, but it is good to see that she can do well in both seasons. As a reminder, the AR videos are going to be a bit shorter than usual for the next couple of months while I focus on streaming Xenoblade, and I do have a link to my Discord channel in the description if you'd like to hang out and chat or get updates on videos and schedules. I also have a Patreon link there if you'd like to help support the channel. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, good luck with your own matches, and I will see you next time.